Saturday night. The WB Thursday continues with an all-new family affair. Hey, I know you. Where are you going? Down to school for Poetry Slam. I love those. What are they? A bunch of people get up on stage and perform poetry, then the audience gets to vote for the winner. And the slam part is just to scare parents away? Yep. How are you getting down there? Subway. Here. You take a cab. It's getting late. I'm going with a bunch of friends. We'll be fine. Keep the money anyway, just in case. A hundred bucks? Cool. Thanks, Uncle Bill. Sure. I meant to give her a 20. Yeah. You've done that with me a couple of times. <laughs> no, you have. Have a good evening, sir. <laughs> Diamond, oh, it's an old one. No, wait, it's a button. <laughs> you know, I'm going downtown tonight to see my son. Oh, come on. How long can it take to buy a token? Maybe she's looking for coupons. Maybe she's showing him pictures of her grandchildren. Give her a break. But I got three more old people jokes. The driving slow, blue hair, and that whole eating early thing. Hey, come on, it's not like we're late or anything. Number three train, downtown, number three. Now we're late. Want to see what I learned from watching The Matrix? Still working on dodging bullets. Come on. You ready? Yeah. Sissy, come on, look, I'll catch you. No, that's okay. Uh, there'll be another train in three minutes. And not with me on it. Come on, jump. I'll meet you guys there. All right, look, I'm backing up. You're losing me. This is your last chance. Come on. Need help with that? Hey, thanks. Officer. You're welcome. Get it all. Hey, French, a little preview of the twin school pageants. Pull up a seat. Oh, I never see a show before I read the Times Review, sir. Pull up a seat. Jolly good. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Uncle Bill's gonna turn on the music, and you have to read it. Ooh, it's sticky. So's your seat. <laughs> You're on. Make sure you sell it. With winter's first snow, comes the first fresh snowflake. Each snowflake is as different, precious, and unique as the next. That sentence is redundant, sir. There's six. Keep reading. But a dusting of snowflakes turns to fury as winter's first violent storm blows in with a vengeance. Oh, that sounded expensive. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dr. Bluestone is expecting you in ten minutes, sir. Why do I have to go to the doctor? Because your ankle is the size of a ham. If you have any candy, bring that too. Davis residence. Oh, Miss Sissy. No, your uncle has his hands full at the moment. She says it's important, sir. I tell her to call my cell phone in ten minutes. She says they only allow her one phone call, sir. So. Yeah. Usual here. Circle that. Sign there. Date that. Is there anything else? Because I got another kid with a sprained ankle at the doctor's office right now. Uh-huh. Check this. X these. Ignore those. 
since she's a first-time offender, she gets off with just a warning. Wait here and I'll run this. So, how's Jody doing? Mr. French took him to the doctor's office. He'll be okay. Great, so everything's working out, huh? Yeah. Jody's getting an x-ray, and you're here in a holding pen with the pickpockets and the uh, working girls. Yeah, it's great people watching. Oh, come on. They're just giving me a warning. It's not like I've got a rap sheet. Not yet. What on earth were you thinking jumping a turnstile? It's not like you didn't have the money. Yeah, but I was there with everybody, and the train was coming, and they all started jumping. Oh, oh, your friends were doing it. Well, clearly, they were thinking about what's best for you. That's why they hung around to make sure you were okay. Look, I'm sorry. You should be. Mr. Davis? Go get your brother. Get the door. Okay, Mr. Daredevil, in you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, slow down, bud. You gotta take it easy, remember? I will, after the winter pageant. No, I think the doctor meant right now. Yeah, and Sissy's gonna take care of you because she's not going anywhere for the next two weeks. But I wanna be the blizzard. Maybe in the spring pageant, let you be a hurricane. They're even bigger and meaner than blizzards. I don't wanna be a hurricane. Hurricanes are stupid. Here, Mr. French, you can have it. I only like the wet side. Come on, kiddo. Let's get you to your room. Are you really gonna eat that lollipop? Here you are. Be sure to get it on everything. <laughs> Jody, this thing weighs a ton. What have you got in here? Books. But you don't read. Hello. Hello. Jody, my goodness, what happened to you? Oh, it's just a sprain. But the doctor did ask that he cease all vigorous activity for the next few weeks. But what about the pageant? He's the blizzard, the finale. He needs to run across the room. Yes, I'm quite familiar with the demands of the role. Well, I guess we'll just have to recast and give Jody a less physical part. Oh, no. Well, hold on a moment. What about the role of Jack Frost? That's already taken by Katie Fields. Katie Fields? The girl? <laughs> You're having a female play the part of a male character. Giles, we've adapted the character to be called Jackie Frost. You should know by now that we strive to break down stereotyping in all its forms. But you don't object to stereotyping storms. In your limited world, a blizzard has to run on two legs, and there's an end to it. Well, I dream of a world where a weather front is judged by its destructive capacity, not by the orthopedic booty around its ankle. Oh, my goodness. You're right. Of course we can have a differently abled blizzard. Jody, we'll find a way to make it work. Jamal, take that out of your mouth. Wow. Thanks, Mr. French. You just have to take their namby-pamby twisted logic and hurl it right back in their faces. Which is to say, you're welcome. Sure you don't want to go to the kids' pageant, French? I can get you a ticket. I know a guy. Oh, no, sir. I don't think the pageant could ever capture the raw excitement of the many, many rehearsals. <laughs> Besides, the uninterrupted hours will give me an excellent opportunity to make a large pot of bolognese sauce. Hey, you never have too much bolognese sauce. Well, exactly. Sarcasm, French. Anyway, I think all the twins really care about is that Sissy's going to be there. Oh, so she's getting a temporary furlough from the Davis home for juvenile offenders? Yeah, she's kept her nose clean and hasn't knifed anybody in the exercise yard. Well, then she should be able to make a smooth transition back into decent society. Well, have fun with the bolognese sauce. Well, thank you, sir. Sarcasm again? Big time. I'm on my way. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Everybody's here, honey. It's about to start. Cutting it kind of close. 
Where is Sissy? I know. The teacher was late and the auditions ran long. I'll be there. Hurry, Sissy. It's almost starting. Don't worry. I'm on my way. Bye. Bye. Bye, one, please. Oh, no. I left my wallet in my locker. Number two train arriving. Number two. Um, hi. You've seen me here before, right? Yeah, red scarf. Well, I left my money at school, and I really need a token. So if you could just... No. Please, I'll pay you back. No. I'm going to miss seeing my little sister in a play. Have a heart. No. The scarf is my room. <sighs> no, I'm not going there again. Number two up down. Now the party. Here I go. Honey, I'm sorry. Was that turnstile in your way? Oh, do not dance that, please. Excuse me, is this your ticket? Yes. Buy your jacket? No, I have an actual person. This tall, my niece. And she's on her way. Nice to meet you, too. All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. Before we start our presentation, may I ask that anyone with cell phones or pagers turn them off now? Thank you. Now. I am proud to present room three in winter. Wow. With winter's first snow comes the first fresh snowflake. I need your address for the citation and your signature there. Oh, I have my own pen, thank you. Feel free to go on scratching. And you initial there and there. Well, you've become quite the little expert on subway law, haven't you? If this is where they keep the policemen, I shudder to think what the prisons are like. Thanks for coming to get me, Mr. French. Do you think I can still make it in time for the pageant? Not even if you stole a car, which is not intended as a suggestion. But a dusting of snowflakes turns to fury as winter's first storm blows in with a vengeance. Uncle Bill's gonna freak when he finds out. Well, he's a reasonable man. Perhaps if you explain the circumstances. You weren't there the first time. He was really upset. More upset than when Master Jody traded his World Series tickets for a pudding cup? Way more. Ooh, well, enjoy that sandwich. It's just, I don't want to see that look in his eyes again. We're home! Hold still. I can't get my coat off! Hold on, hold on. Ow! Mr. French, don't tell him. I'm sorry. If he finds out, he'll hate me. Please don't tell him. Miss Sigourney, it's my job to tell him. My arms are stuck. Please don't. Sissy, you missed the pageant. Sissy, are you okay? What happened? I was really worried. I'm so sorry, guys, but... It was raining, and I couldn't get a cab. It was just a big mess. Everything I tried, something got in my way. I'm just so bummed I missed the pageant. I hope you guys can forgive me. 
That's okay. Uncle Bill got a tape of it. Yep, I was able to borrow it from one of the kazillion parents who were taping it. Come on, sister, let's watch. All right. You gotta start without me. All right. Okay, but hurry. What happened to the big pot of bolognese sauce? Actually, sir, there was a minor setback. I didn't have the required number of tomatoes, so I decided to save it for a rainy day. It is rainy. Then a rainier day. <laughs> well, this is more than I need to be talking about sauce. Uh, I'm going to get Jody out of his coat. So it's been a whole day and he hasn't ratted you out? Nope. And you don't seem happy about this because... Because if my uncle finds out, he could get fired. How would your uncle find out? We're not going to tell him, and it's not like you're going to tell him. What if Mr. French changes his mind? What if he tells him? Oh, no, that ain't happening. All right, look. That is not happening because he's in too deep. He's an accomplice. Ratting you out would be the exact same thing as ratting himself out. Yeah, I guess you're right. No, no, don't, don't guess that I'm right. Know that I am right. Yeah, but he just looks miserable. This kind of thing's not easy for him. Miss Sissy, we need to talk. Your citation from the subway incident has arrived in the mail. Fortunately, I was able to intercept it before your uncle got hold of it. Oh, thanks. That would have been terrible. Well, yes, for both of us. But, now that we have the citation, it presents us with several new problems. What problems? Don't you just send it in? Well, I wish it were that easy. First, it requires a rather substantial check for the fine. Checks? I don't have checks. Do you have checks? Well, yes, I do. But, rather than writing one from my personal account and creating a paper trail, perhaps it would be prudent to go to the post office and purchase a money order. Okay, I'll pay back, I promise. Right. Then, there's the second matter. They require your uncle's signature on the citation. Perhaps I could counterfeit his handwriting. I know what it looks like. Right? Uh, just a moment, sir. Nothing of this to your uncle. Mr. French, I didn't think you are going to have to do all this. Yes, well... I don't see how we can turn back now. Is this all the mail we got? Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, no, sir. No, this is for me. It's a survey from, um, the, the Royal Academy of Postage, <laughs> asking me who I'd rather see on the new 50 pence stamp. Old frumpy Queen Elizabeth or young frumpy Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> It's a matter that really deserves a great deal more thought. So I will retire to my room to give it that thought in private. Excuse me. Boy, the oddest thing set him off. Stamps. Yeah. A lot of pressure being British. He probably has other things on his mind. Well, he's upset because he's not telling you the truth, and neither am I. The reason I missed the winter pageant is... I jumped a turnstile again. I didn't want to do it. I just... I left my wallet at school, and I was going to miss seeing Jody be a blizzard. Uh-huh. And how was Mr. French involved in that? He came to the Port Authority and got me out. He only kept it a secret from me because I asked him to. I didn't want to disappoint you again. Wow. How mad are you? Not sure. That's how mad I am. You know what? I think the best place for you right now would be your room studying for about the next year. French! He only did it because I begged him to. Please don't do anything to him. 
This part was about me and you. The next part is about him and me. It doesn't involve you. Room. Royal Academy of Postage? You said I could improvise that part. Yeah, but I thought you'd come up with something realistic. Really? I was totally convinced. So she came clean? Yeah, she's a good kid. She just needs to get scared back in line once in a while. And it only took two days. Not including the day it took you to tell me. Well, sir, you understand. She pleaded with me. She even gave me that heartfelt, wounded waif look. So I weighed the merits of worrying you versus your need to know, and, oh, I exercise judgment. Sue me. I didn't do it. Neither did I. Shall I see to that, sir? No. No, I got it. I'm in the zone right now. Can we go find the ball? But take that back, French. You handle it. isn't the problem. It's keeping it. Just because you love me doesn't mean you can't be attracted to another woman. All right. All right. What is wrong with you? Seventh Heaven. Then, critics and audiences have embraced the WB's newest hit drama, Everwood. I bet New York had everything. Just about. Everwood, after Seventh Heaven, on the WB Monday night. And now, a full hour of the Jamie Kennedy Experiment on the WB.